Hello, my name is Martin, and welcome back to another video. The two towers. Yeah. We thought we'd give you a break from all that um, crawling about underground for a change. Cheers. And uh, we'll do like, uh, you remember when we did like five different places around and we've, we've hopped about the different things? Well, this time we're doing some Lancashire Towers. They're all <laughs> basically around the Berry, sort of Ram's Bottom area. When I was doing a bit of uh, research, I thought, hang on a minute, we can, uh, we can kill a few birds with one stone around this area. So, they're not exactly towers. You're not going to see anything sky high and stuff. In fact, some of them are ruins, but they're interesting nonetheless. So the first one we're going to is just outside Bury, um, and it's called Grant's Tower, and it's got quite a bit of history to it. So I think we're on the right road, not quite sure. Okay, so where are we this week? Well, using the city of Manchester as a base, we'll zoom in there, and we're going to the north of Manchester, between Berry and Ram's Bottom. There's Berry at the bottom, famous for its black puddings. And as we zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, more and more. There you go, the first location is there and it's called Grant's Tower. Now over here is the second location and this is the town of um, Ram's Bottom. Now let's just find it for you if we come back out. So the second tower Ooh, is there the Tentering Tower? All right, so we're just to the north of Ram's Bottom on the second uh, tower, and there in the middle you've got the River Irwell. So if you just zoom back out again, I think we're, we're roughly going sort of this area here over to that area there. So it's all around the town of Ram's Bottom with our friend the River Irwell in the middle there. Apples! Apple. <laughs> <laughs> we got some apples! Real apples! I'm going to wash mine and eat it later. No, dry out time now. No, you're such a pig, you will eat yours. <laughs> yeah. you, I'm surprised you didn't get like a big bag full and live off them, <laughs> yeah. live off them for a week. Are you going to eat yours now? I'll try. I've got bird shit on my hand. What's it like? Is it nice? That's all right. Oh, James, I think we've got a bit of a well here. Oh, yeah? Some kind of uh, drinking well. What's that about? Nice little well, that, isn't it? Mm. Or some sort of drinking trough. Yeah, for horses. For ye horses. Maybe for horses, yeah. Well, clean, isn't it? Crystal clear. Mm. Mm. Drinkable. Okay, so we're here at the first of our towers, which isn't a tower. It's a small old ruin, but I think it used to be a tower. And I've got a picture for you somewhere I can show you. Anyway, I'll turn the camera around. This is Grant's Tower. So it was built around about 1829 and it was 50 foot high in its prime and people used to come up here, take a picnic and spend the day here looking at the fantastic views across the valley. It's a bit grey today and the views are fantastic but definitely grey. Okay, so what's the story? Well, the year is 1783 and William and Daniel Grant, two brothers, escape Scotland, there's been lots of crop failures and they want to set up a new home and a new life elsewhere in England. They come to Ramsbottom and legend has it they stood on this hill, looked down at the town of Ramsbottom and decided that was the place. Now they must have had money because they bought a calico printing works off Sir Robert Peel, whose son went on to form the Metropolitan Police, but that's another story. Okay, on that other story, I learned while making this video that Sir Robert Peel, this man here that formed the police force, had a father called Robert Peel. Rather confusing. And it's this Robert Peel here, this gentleman, a wealthy industrialist that we're concerned with. And this is the guy that the Grant brothers brought the, the calico printing works off. So, yes, two Robert Peels, bit um, confusing, but that's the, the long and short of it. And I learned something new there. Uh, I think if we carry on with these towers around this area, we might be encountering Robert Peel again. Anyway, let's crack on. 
So this, this calico printing works is very, very successful. And years later, it was their sons that decided to build Grant's Tower on the hill above Ramsbottom, rumoured to be the place where the, uh, the fathers originally stood and said, that's where we'll live. Anyway, 1829, they build the tower. Now this is what it used to look like and as you can see today it's a shadow of its former self. It's quite a grand structure isn't it? On the day that it was opened all the employees at the Calico Printing Works were given the day off and barrels of beer and large quantities of food were taken up to the site where there were races, games and a sing-song. Uh, the Grant brothers joined in as well and apparently cannons were fired. Looks like it's been done up, in fact we query whether someone lives here or not but uh... Now apparently it is being done up as you can see but the work wasn't happening today. These are bits of the tower all around it. Uh, I think the local landowner or farmer as we've been told is making it into like a little I don't know summer house kind of thing. Uh, so we decided we'd try and have a quick peek inside but it's quite a lovely place and I'm glad it's owned now and someone's caring for it. Um, but let's take a quick peek inside near the front door. There you go, not a great deal to see, but uh, it'll make a nice little uh, hangout that for someone and glad it's being cared for. Right, a couple of extra facts for you about Grant's Tower. The first one is, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but the book Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens has got two characters in called the Cheerable Brothers. I've never read it, but apparently the Grant Brothers inspired the Cheerable Brothers, or that's who the inspiration was in the book. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it, it is written down. Another crazy interesting fact is that there was a steeplejack that lived in Grant's Tower in the 1850s. His name was James Wright. Now, this steeplejack earned a reputation across Britain and apparently across Europe because he had a unique way of getting ropes up to the top of church steeples and tall buildings and chimneys and stuff like that. And what he did was he would use a kite to fly the rope up, right? And then how he secured it on top, I, I, don't, I don't know how he did it, but he used a, a unique way of using flying a kite and getting the rope up to the top of the building. Like I say, don't know how that one worked, but two extra facts I thought I'd throw in that I read about Grant's Tower. Just another little thing over here, I think it might be modern. Um, for a second we thought it was a well, but it's not, but it might have been. Now, during the Second World War, the Home Guard was stationed up here because it was such a vantage point. But apparently, on the 21st of September 1944, at noon, in a cloud of dust, the tower toppled and fell down. Um, such a great shame. Now, the alternative to this is, one local said to me that he thought it was blown up because it was used as a navigation aid by the enemy, the Luftwaffe. Um, if that's the case, it's a real great shame. I'm more likely to believe that the tower was just very old, fell into a state of disrepair and fell down. Anyway, there you go. That was the end of Grant's Tower in its glory days. It's supposed to be, it's forecast not rain today. It's supposed to be a dry day. And it's, um, it's as great as anything. It's a great autumn day. Anyway, that was Grant's Tower. Uh, fascinating history. But let's crack on to the next one, which I think is across the valley. And it's called... Tentering Tower. Hmm. You know, when I was looking at this, this uh, Tentering Tower, yeah, there's a story about. Um, some bombing that was done in the First World War. Was there? Now you hear a lot of bombing in the Second World War because obviously planes came over, but this was a Zeppelin. Yeah, the air filled thing. The hydrogen filled yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. Zeppelins that tended to fall, come down and crash and everything. Well, they didn't tend to crash, but one big one they did crash. You know which one it was? No. Nope. The Hindenburg. Anyway, I got some more information for you on that because uh, the idea of an airship coming across here and dropping bombs along around Ramsbottom. It's quite fascinating mm. to me back in the uh, 
back in the First World War. That was daring for 1916, I think yeah, exactly. it was, yeah. Yeah. All the locals like, what the bloody hell is that? Well, they wouldn't know what we what had hit them, would they? Yeah. Right, so you hear of bombing raids in the Second World War, but this was from the First World War, quite fascinating. 1916, apparently. 25th of September, 1916. Zeppelin LZ-61, which I think is that one there in the picture. Tactical number L-21, uh, commanded by Oberlieutenant Kurt Frankenberg. Um, he was going after Derby, so they were flying over Britain and they ended up getting pushed north by the winds and they ended up over the towns of Rottenstall and Holcombe area and they was dropping bombs. Apparently around this area no one actually got hurt. Um, but yes, bombs were dropped in 1916. Um, there's a whole story about it and you can read, there's a book called Zeppelins Over Lancashire that you can read as well. Anyway, on his return to Germany, Oberlieutenant Frankenberg reported that he'd successfully bombed the city of Derby, which of course we know he hadn't done. But later he got his comeuppance because it was two months later he was returning from another bombing raid but was shot down over Lowestoft. The Zeppelin went down and all 17 men aboard were killed. Anyway, there you go. Just a quick story I thought I should throw in for you. We found a bit of a waterfall here. Let's crack on. There's a nice little waterfall behind there. I reckon that is a tribute of the Irwell because the Irwell's just over there. Anyway, let's go and find this tower. I hope we're going the right way. I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Come on, James. <laughs> oh, I forgot it now. <laughs> <laughs> It's very beautiful. It is nice. Well, I think we're lost. We're at the lovely stream here. The uh, the waters of Narnia, <laughs> Moldova or whatever it is. We don't know where we are. Um, and I think it's this way, James. According to the thing, I think it's that way along that path. So yes, we had got hopelessly lost. What I've done is, I'll tell you what I've done. I'll just zoom in for you. Um, the way to get to the Tentering Tower is you go up through the streets here and there's a path there at the back of that factory to the Tentering Tower. This is on a steep bank. You're on the, uh, the River Irwell Valley here. Factory here, through here, there. I hadn't done that because I wasn't aware that that path existed. So I had, I think I parked my car roughly around here, somewhere around here. And we ended up walking, we saw the little waterfall here. We ended up walking all this way. <laughs> and then we found some sort of public footpath that took us across the woods here, across fields, way out of our way, all down here. By now we're getting fed up and I'm using my phone and I'm trying to point the little blue thing on, you know, that says where you are towards the Tentering Tower. I've ended up going across muddy fields, looking out for bulls and cows and all sorts. And then we got about here and some fishermen said, are you lost lads, what are you looking for? We said, the Tentering Tower. He said, it's here. We're, it's in that field. And if you'd have been like normal people, you'd have just come up the path this way. And we laughed. We all laughed together. <laughs> <laughs> wet through and anyway don't go that way if you do go there just go from this way there anyway that was a long-winded explanation wasn't it but we got hopelessly lost let's crack on with the video do you reckon this will be a fail or what i got wet feet <laughs> <laughs> well he's going for the ass shuffle 
He's going for the bum shuffle. Oh, he's in. He's in. I'm all right. Well done. Are right, you cool? <laughs> you just need to get over this this uh, ridiculous fence now. Watch him. Oh! Ah! Ah! <laughs> I've done it. You your pants. I think I'm leaking. Still there. Right. What did you do here now? Uh, I got caught on it. It's because you're on a slope. Cut your leg over like a dog. Is it easy? No, that's not easy. You need the, you need the, the fence to be lower. That other side of that there where you are now, just beyond behind that, that's it. I've cut your leg over. Come on, you've got your ball sacks higher than mine. <laughs> well done, what a good lad. This journey's been ridiculous, but I'm told we're near the field now. <laughs> Should push me. <laughs> um, I'm really, you know what, as always, there was an easier way to come. I suspected that. But, um, you had done your research? I, did, I tried to research it. Oh, it's there. We're actually in the field now where it is. Uh, so, the second tower of the day, Tentering Tower. Any bulls in the field? Just double check, James. Right, what a journey. I'm not going that way back. Anyway, we're here. Tentering Tower, there you go, I'll get you some decent shots of it. Um, apparently it used to be for drying things, but I'll give you some more details in a minute. Right, I think after that walk, it was completely unnecessary. Connor came up here and I'm sure he, he just come, came an easier way. I don't yeah. remember him saying it was a horrendous way this way. Research. I think you should have done your research. <laughs> no, I, <think> you <laughs> I got it in first. Anyway, are we uh, brew? Brew. Brew. Get it made. <laughs> Rack on. I'll make a brew, you draw. Why don't you bring a spoon? They get hot, these ones. Did you bring a spoon? Are you bringing any biscuits? No, I'm on a calorie controlled diet. Right, I'm going to have to brew it with my fingers. What is this Yorkshire gold? These are chatly, I think. What are you pulling your face at? So, just down the valley is Stubbins Vale Mill, constructed in 1851. I think it was something to do with drying cloth. There's evidence to suggest that this place was built as a one-story building and then later um, another story was added and I think I might have just seen some of that evidence now but I'm not quite sure. There is more on it and I'll try and read it and do a voiceover for you. Ever heard the phrase I'm on tenter hooks? Well this is where it comes from. Anyway, a date on this building. Well all I've got is that Stubbins Vale Mill and the tentering tower was attached to the mill. The mill was built in 1851 and it says the tentering tower was built shortly after. So we've got, the best I can do is mid 1800s at the minute. Uh, tentering is the process of stretching newly made cloth and letting it dry out. This prevents the cloth, cloth from shrinkage. As it dries, it allows the warp and the weft fibres to stay in the correct alignment. So there you go, that's what tentering is. It would have been done initially out in the fields, but they decided to build this tower. Uh, initially one storey, and then... Um, they were made a two-story building. So yeah, it, it looks like they brought the cloth from the mill up here to dry it out. I'm not completely familiar with the process, but that's what it was. It was for drying cloth. Obviously, we've been some sort of gate on there when it had two stories here. Uh, you see where the floors were there? Where the wood, wood was? And it's had a bit of a roof on there. I'll bring the other camera up so you can see. But I'm just thinking, you know, they're saying it was built as a single story. If you see now, it's a two story. But if you look up there, right, I'm gonna, I can see evidence of what might have been a sloping roof. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna show you. But if you look there, that bit of stone that goes diagonal there, could be nothing. 
but we don't know it could be part of the original roof that was lowered down you see there's evidence here in the wall of wood that was uh, in the walls here whether these were racks what they've dried the cloth on i'm not quite sure but uh, a bit old and rotten now as you can see it was also built to be quite ornamental and quite imposing as well which it is really there's quite a few of these towers, particularly around the Berry area, so if you're going to tell me about them, I know them, I've clocked them, uh, but there's a few of these towers, so these, this video could be part one of the tower trail, couldn't it? Could be a new series we do. I'll have a think about that one, might do it, might not. Anyway, let's crack on with the video. I see your drone skills are still amazing. I know, I can't. <laughs> part as good as mine. I practice every day. Anyway, we got you some shots, I think, didn't we? Right, you want to go for a black pudding now, because as we're near Berry, don't you? Mm, yeah, Piccola. Do you have pickle lily on them? Yeah. What do you have? Brown sauce. Have, no, you can have mint sauce on them, can't you? I think. Mint sauce? No, you can have mint sauce on, yeah. Mm. Anyway, the two towers. Hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Take care. Thanks for watching. Oh, we'll be doing some more towers around here as well on these above ground explorations. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now. See you in a bit. See you in a bit.